Today we're looking at some of the forgotten Reebok technology from the early to mid 2000s and of course we're talking about the Pump 2. Hey guys welcome back to a Kickstarter's channel today we're looking at the Pump 2 system that came out around early to mid 2000s and that is the system that was shortly produced for a couple of years and then it was forgotten after that. Um, for me one of the main reasons for this system uh, to have such a short uh, life was probably the cost being over engineered, being very expensive and at the same time not being as effective as the manual pump that we all remember from the early 90s to all the way to the end of the 90s and the one that we fell in love with the brand back in the day. Now with the pump 2, like I said, there's a lot of engineering going on here and I will, and I will go through the explanation, show you in details and very close how that system works but uh, to just abbreviate before going into the details we had an automatic inflating system right underneath your heel when you're walking or running that inflates the bladder that it's stitched in on top of the shoe and inflates it automatically but how do we do this the, we were presented with an issue uh, because not everybody wants the same pressure or not everybody wants their foot to be squeezed completely so we have a pressure regulator right here on the side then can adjust the different pressure from the pump system from zero all the way to 12 psi and then depending on how you like those shoes to be tight on you uh, you can adjust it yourself now this specific model i grabbed out of ebay a, a little while ago super cheap very well preserved i mean it's worn obviously but it's very well preserved from a 2005 uh, training model with the automatic pump 2 system and the regulator in the back this is a shoe that I distinctly remember looking at the stores back in the day and actually putting on feet and trying to figure out how everything worked uh, because not a lot of the stores were, people were there to explain to you how the system works so the internet was really picking up speed and you could have gone and look at their website and see some of the explanation which I did back in the day uh, but they did a good job with this design despite the fact that I really don't like the RBK abbreviation that this minimal branding that doesn't say Reebok any anywhere just tiny pump here and there and this is a far cry from the designs of the early and mid 90s that I absolutely love but I still appreciate uh, what they've done here and the engineering of that pump 2 system of course let's go ahead and check it out in a close-up and I'm going to show it to you how it looks on feet you're going to see the inflator inside right here so the purpose of the system was to remove the manual inflation system or the pump from the outside and we only had the pump a regulator and the user was intended to have a fully automatic experience with the pump as uh, soon as the shoe was slipped on the pump bladder was stitchable pattern so if you can see it outside this is the pump bladder right here and going around the hill the inflation of the bladder was executed via the integrated foam heel pump uh, system again hopefully the camera can pick it up you'll see right there kind of looks like uh, some of the nike zoom uh, units but actually it's not it's just a, a pump bladder with a foam inside when you press with your foot or will automatically inflate and of course it was executed by you walking or running so that was uh, the way for the pump chamber to be inflated so obviously uh, one identical pressure around that bladder was not good for every single person every a single foot is different what Reebok did to solve this problem is they introduced uh, the uh, pump regulator so from here you can actually regulate the pressure of the chamber of course you can turn it all the way to off and not use it at all or regulate the amount of pressure you want around your foot so the way it functions the regulator kind of looks like an umbrella valve with internal air pressure that is sealing the air via the uh, lip of the umbrella so when you turn it to the position you like the air the excessive air pressure that is being uh, contributed inside the bladder it will exit uh, through the valve uh, right here and the design provided uh, a variety of pressure from a zero all the way to 12 psi range so depending on your personal preferences you can find the exact one you want and turn it on to that one so I think this system was kind of a over-engineered, uh, a little bit more complicated. That's why it was kind of a short-lived. It didn't last that long. Um, and this specific model was produced in October of 2000 
2005, so almost 20 years ago. So in some uh, later iterations, they changed the regulator a little bit, uh, put a little lever, uh, for you to be able to easily grasp it and adjust because just with the twist it wasn't that uh, comfortable especially if your fingers are sweaty you gotta go down and twist it and my slip so they made, made some adjustments uh, to this uh, system but you can see this model it's definitely a training model it says RBK training right here and uh, we have a massive TPU plate that it's going all around they are separating the heel and the forefoot, similar to some previous models from Reebok. We have a tiny RBK logo right here with a vector. Uh, and all that is foam. It's nothing fancy. There's no DMX. There's no hexalite or anything like that. Uh, it's just the foam. Uh, they're not uncomfortable, definitely, but uh, some of these systems are missing for sure. Uh, some pump branding right here, some pump here, and RBK again the abbreviation that i really didn't like at the time i think this was kind of the nemesis of reebok they went down after that uh, changing the logo changing their name and all that stuff uh, almost entirely the shoe is made of synthetic leather and you'll see it how it's uh, kind of starting to a little bit crack over here and we have this kind of a patent synthetic leather at the time I was definitely curious about these models uh, looking at them at the stores i was uh, uh, trying to figure it out how everything works putting them on feet walking around but uh, nevertheless i think the system itself it's still very interesting to me um, and honestly i prefer the old school manual pump that way i can just pump it myself and just the look of a pump sitting right here or right here was amazing and uh, this one was kind of a, the follow-up of that original pump system now, one of the other things that I really didn't like at the time, it was the questionable choice of materials. Of course, we don't have any genuine materials here. Everything is synthetic, mesh, uh, patent leather, which for me always looked cheap. Uh, I know a lot of you uh, like the patent leather, especially on certain uh, Nike or, or uh, Jordan models. But for me, patent leather was kind of symbol of marching band shoes or parade shoes. If for those of you that uh, serve in the armed forces, uh, like myself, uh, the parade shoes or the dress shoes uh, were always uh, patent leather. They had to be super shiny. Uh, so I was not a huge fan of that. Uh, but here we have this patent leather. It's all wide. Functional wise, these shoes are extremely comfortable. I gotta tell you, because they're wide in the front. Uh, they're real trainers with a lot of support from that TPO in the middle. Of course, the 2.0 pump uh, system is there to provide some more custom fit around your foot as well. Uh, but again, we don't have Hexalite, we don't have DMX, we don't have 3D Ultralite, we don't have Graphlite, we don't have any of the old technologies that I personally fell in love with. And I'm sure a lot of you as well did. Uh, so this was like completely a uh, different uh, style and completely different brand in my mind at the time. And no wonder right around that time, uh, they completely failed and Adidas bought the brand. Uh, but as a history piece and as a functional system, it's still something interesting to talk about because not a lot of companies innovate these days. We're still getting more of the same, a lot of foams, uh, a lot of sock-like uppers, and really nobody's thinking about doing anything high-tech like these systems we saw back in the day so yeah that's pretty much it guys hit the thumbs up if you like the video stay tuned to the channel subscribe if you're new and as always guys you have a wonderful day